Tonight I'm using a spoon. This happens to be a little Lunker Hunt rattling spud. There's a thousand ways to hook up live bait, but when I'm jigging with a spoon and jigging pretty aggressively, I'll just lightly hook them right through the meat of the lips. I don't go through their skull, because that tends to, you tend to wear a bigger hole in their head when you're jigging. The way I've got my electronics set up right here is pretty straightforward. I see my bait going up and down, but if I hit view, that's gonna give me a full screen of my flasher. If I hit exit, it'll bring me back, and if I hit exit one more time, now I can see the full water column right here, which I can do the same right here on my flasher. But since I'm fishing walleyes tonight, they like to relate to the bottom more so than anything. By hitting my view one more time, that will zoom me in. Uh, you can see eight times there. So that gives me a really good view of the bottom. So anything that comes creeping in, like a walleye coming in slow on the bottom, I can see that bottom line. That's the very bottom of the lake. Anything that fluctuates there, if anything comes in ever so slightly off the bottom, I can see that really, really well. This is a five inch unit and that's, per that's perfectly fine. It's a smaller screen, but when you can zoom in, that's a big help to see any bottom hugging fish. When I'm outside, I like fishing a little bit longer rod as well. I feel like I got quite a bit of control with walleyes and or, you know, a little bit bigger fish, especially outside. This is a 35 inch quick tip. It's got a nice light tip on it, but it loads right into a good backbone. And the other thing is out here, I'm fishing a little bit deeper. We still got a little sunlight out. And I like fishing braid because I like to drive those hooks home when I'm fishing a little bit deeper water. And then as the light starts to go down, oftentimes I'll slide up a little bit shallower on the piece of structure that I'm fishing. Walleyes in particular will slide up as it gets later and later in the night. Oh, that was nice right there. That guy came in and wolfed it. There we go. Pull my electronics out. And I have 25 feet, so I'm, I was able to drill that fish pretty hard with that braid. And I got a good hook in him because he ate it nicely. He ate it just the way you'd hope he would. You can see that rod load up, takes all that head shake right out. Or, you know, it, it combats that head shake, I should say. Oh, there he is. Moment of truth. Get him up the hole. Come here, dude. Oh, it's a, it's a pike. It's not what I'm looking for, but I'll take it. It's a little rattling spud there, but I'm going to get this guy back because... The walleye should be showing up here real soon. The other thing I'll do when I'm walleye fishing, you can see my bait here. I'll, I'll take and I'll bounce it off bottom. That's another good reason I hook a minnow the way I do is a lot of times if you're bouncing your baits off the bottom, that'll give it a chance to pull your minnow off of the hooks. You tend to lose live bait more often when you're actually hitting bottom like this. But if you hook them lightly through the lips, that barb really holds. It's got a hard time backing, backing back out of that hole. Ooh, nice. That was sweet. I can hear my hydro wave going here too. So I don't know if it, it's working or not, but it's, uh, it's early ice and I mean, you know, the fish are pretty aggressive this time of year. So. I'm just going for it. I'm put. I'm adding. A, I got rattles on that on the on my spoon. I've got the little mini hydro wave down there, and uh, I'm just I'm causing a lot of commotion down there. This guy's got me folded up. I like this. He's coming. We're gonna make hopefully make short work of this guy. Here's the here's my leader. We're getting close. Getting close. Come on, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? I'm kind of hungry tonight, so. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, come on, dude. I see it. I see it. I just can't get its head up the hole. Oh, come on. Please, please. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes. Yeah, look at that. Oh, beautiful. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Sun setting. I'm out here pretty much by myself, and that's that's what early ice can produce right there. 
nice healthy walleyes. I might let this guy go, but might sit out here a little longer and try and get an eater, but look at that. Drilled right in the beak. It's a beautiful, beautiful little bait. It's got rattles in it. Sweet. We'll let this guy go. There's a little Hydrowave Mini and I've got it turned on. I've got it, you can see the little red light. It's blinking frenzy. And I've got the thing turned all the way up, but fish can really, they can, they're, they're very aware of their surroundings. And uh, I've got this thing in the water. And as soon as that thing hits the water, those fish can hear it, feel it. It draws their curiosity. And that's, that's what I'm trying to do right now. My bait down there has got rattles in it. I've got a uh, little minnow head on there for smell and attraction. This isn't a very big spot off of this little hump. So anything that pulls up onto this hump, I have a feeling can hear that thing. So I'm just using everything in my power to just cause as much disturbance down there as I can. You know, it's something I don't see a whole lot on spoons these days, but I think it's something that might be a little underrated. The one nice thing about a feathered treble is you know, if, you, if you're not using live bait, you can really rip that thing and uh, you could probably get away without using any live bait or a minnow head tipped on there because that treble is covered up with the feathers. Say my minnow did fall off. It's not just a bare hook hanging there in front of them. I can get a little more aggressive or if I'm just straight up not fishing with a minnow head, I can really rip that thing and uh, potentially get a strike. Got him. There we go. So we That's more like an eater right there. That'll go in the pan. He came in hot to trot, that's for sure. Put that hydro wave back down. I really do feel like the Hydrowave works. I've played around with it a little bit the last couple years and uh, it's not a, not a thing a lot of guys do, I think. Um, but one time I was sitting out, this kind of wraps up the night, but a little story time. I was sitting, uh, I was spearing actually. And I'd sat there best part of the morning from sun up for about three hours. And this is no joke. Sitting there, live bait, decoys, spoons, just throwing the kitchen sink at them. Didn't see a single fish. And um, I was like, well, what the heck? I got this thing in my backpack and I took it out and I dropped it in and I'm not kidding. The first 30 seconds that thing was down the hole. Now, coincidence maybe, I don't know. But the first 30 seconds I turned that thing on and dropped it down the hole, we saw our first fish. <laughs> so. I'm beginning to be a, a true, honest believer about it. So, just a little story there. <laughs>